Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. We're going to wait just about a minute or so, let everyone kind of jump in, and then we will get started. So today we're going to be talking about one of our latest investment opportunities called the Watercolors of Centerton. Um, I'll get into it here in just a minute. I uh, really appreciate you guys joining, and uh, we're really excited about this asset. So excited to jump jump in. So with that, I think we've got a good number here in. So we're going to get started and. Uh, we have a lot to get through, so buckle up, pen and pad ready. Uh, we're going to run through this uh, this asset. This is called Watercolors of Centerton. Um, so this is a Class A multifamily uh, property in uh, Centerton, Arkansas, which is just outside of Bentonville, Arkansas. And we'll get into that in a minute. Um, and this is actually a presentation that we did uh, at the end of uh, Q4 last year. And I've updated it with a few new slides, um, but uh, really this property, we actually own the first two phases of it. It's a, it's a large um, 376 unit class A apartment building um, that we own the first two phases on. The last phase is about to be delivered here in the next uh, few months. And so this uh, webinar is really to fill out the final part of our capital raise. So we've raised, uh, our, our target raise is $28 million of equity on this property. Uh, we literally have about $2 million left of that 28 million. Um, and so we have a few spots left for people to jump in and uh, very excited about the performance of this asset so far. But before we get into that, let's jump right in. So before I do that, obviously got to give the disclosure, the disclaimers that uh, this is not an offering for a security. Uh, you need to review the full PPM to understand all the risks and uh, other factors involved. And this is purely for educational purposes only. And any uh, projections that we use are, are purely that. There are projections and past performance is not necessarily indicative of future performance. So with that, let's jump in. Uh, here's the table of contents. Uh, we will make this slide deck available for their, those that want to uh, download it after the fact. Um, but let's jump right in. So first off is the team. So if you're not familiar with Aspen Funds, this is our management team. Here's our two co-founders, uh, Bob and Jim. And uh, not to get too much in the story of Aspen, but we're really opportunistically driven. And so uh, Aspen was started 10 years ago um, and first in a uh, started in distressed debt and saw an opportunity after the great financial crisis and saw some of the macroeconomic trends that um, were really happening at that point. And that was a good, good place to be and good timing to, to get into distressed debt for obvious reasons. Um, we've since built out a, uh, a really amazing team um, in that vertical and have uh, had great performance over the last 10 years. Several years ago, we started um, expanding into other asset classes with the same methodology of looking at macroeconomic trends and identifying where the best opportunities are going to be as investors. Because every asset class and every strategy you know, has its ebbs and its flows, right? Times when it's good and times when it's not as good to be in. And so that's what we want to be. You know, We are first investors and we want to uh, you know, benefit from those trends as investors alongside of all of our investors. Uh, the other two part of our management team, Dan Schulte and myself, we're also partnered on this deal with uh, a very strong um, team called Elevate Commercial Investment Group. Uh, they have a very, very deep multifamily experience and uh, we're very excited to partner with them. We've, we've invested with them in some other deals that they've done and uh, we brought them into this deal to really bring out a very strong team of management on these, these types of assets, class A uh, assets that really require a high level of operational expertise to operate. Uh, we're also a partner with uh, Tarek El Moussa. Um, you may have seen, seen him on uh, some of the HGTV shows. Um, he's a partner on this deal as well. Um, and then kind of a really key piece of this you know, puzzle when you're putting together teams for uh, multifamily acquisitions and operations, you want to have a really good property management team. And so our management team is Asset Living. Um, they've been around for 36 years and manage over 175,000 units. Um, they are a behemoth in the space and uh, really, really good um, at operating these types of properties. And the, the team um, that is currently in place right now has been operating this property for the past two years. Um, so it's they know this asset very well and we have very good um, uh, operational expertise in place. Again, I kind of mentioned this, but our process for looking at deals is first, it's first top down, right? We want to look at what are the what are the trends in play, the macroeconomic tides that are going to support different verticals and different strategies. They're going to be different as as you know in in different times when you invest. And so we want to position ourselves to be beneficiaries of those the, those trends and position ourselves in good asset classes and good strategies as investors. And then we help put together and assemble the best in class teams to execute on the business plan 
and uh, perform well on those um, uh, uh, deals and you know structure very investor friendly deals. That's really our goal. And one of the cool things about how we work, we're almost like a family office type where we go find deals that we like ourselves and then we invest in the deals ourselves. Uh, this is our personal capital deployment strategy um, as a management team. And so we're investing alongside in every asset that we put together. Um, this is actually, need to update this from last quarter, but we've now uh, have about $150 million in investor capital that we manage, about 300 million in assets. And uh, been going for, for over 10 years. We've been on the Inc. 5000 for the past three years as a company. And we've invested in a lot of asset classes. So mortgage notes, you know, the distressed debt, like I mentioned earlier, that's been a core of a, our team for the past 10 years. We've invested in a lot of multifamily, um, industrial, self-storage, uh, retail, um, oil and gas as well. So we have a very broad experience and we're really good at, at identifying where the good opportunities are going to be in each asset class. So let's get into the property itself. You can see here the picture uh, behind the, uh, the the text. There is an actual picture of the property. This is a beautiful property located in Centerton, Arkansas, just a few miles from the brand new um, headquarters that Walmart is currently building right now. Um, and first and foremost, you know when we say Arkansas to people, you know you generally, if you're on the coast, right, you're thinking Arkansas. Who wants to live there? You know, but if you're in the Midwest where we're at here in Kansas City. This is the hottest market in the Midwest. And if you haven't heard of it, I think it's actually a good thing, right? Because you want to be on the front end of, of trends. And I'm going to show you some data that will probably blow your mind about this market um, because a lot of people haven't heard about it. So I, I call it the best market you haven't heard of yet, right? But that's what it was like to invest in Austin, you know, 15 years ago in Dallas, you know, before that, and these really hot markets that have incredible growth. Um, for a lot of reasons. And this is what we believe to be a very, very strong market, but it's not priced like a Dallas or like an Austin yet. Uh, I think it will be in the future. And right now, this is uh, this is a Class A asset. We think Class A is the place to be right now um, versus you know heavy value add deals for a variety of reasons. Um, these are you know core, core plus assets that have a lot less operational risk, a lot less construction risk. These have a lot less deferred maintenance and so we want to get into a really good asset in a really good market and ride the rent growth trend in that market. And this is, as I'll show you, has one of the strongest rent growth um, uh, numbers in the country. This uh, first two phases, which I said we've already purchased, it's already stabilized. We're at right now 97% pre-leased occupancy. Um, just incredible uh, demand for this property. Phase three, which we're uh, just the tail end of the raise on, um, is going to be a lease at play. So we're going to uh, basically purchase from the developer uh, the final phase of, of this property and then lease it up. And we've already uh, started to build a significant wait list for, for pre-leasing for that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, again, you know, the in-place rents on the first two phases were well below the market. We're purchasing this straight from the developer. So this is uh, really a great strategy um, because developers generally aren't good operators, right? They are there to make uh, spread on their construction versus what they can sell it for after construction. And that's what we did. So we got a great deal. The the operator intentionally left rents very low because he just was worried about keeping it really highly occupied. Um, but we've already begun to push rents uh, slightly and we've seen no drop in occupancy um, from raising rents. And one of the amazing things about this deal is we are assuming a Fannie Mae loan at a 3.49% fixed rate for about nine years left uh, on that term. Um, on the first two phases. And then we've got some other uh, great financing lined up for phase three. Um, and then again, like I said, co-investment, our team is putting uh, you know, a good amount of capital into this deal alongside of our investors. So we are aligned, um, not only just in our incentive structure on the payouts of the profits, but even more so uh, through our own personal capital that we've invested as LPs right alongside of all our investors in this deal. Just a real, real quick look over at this this property. This is Watercolors of Centerton, like I said, a 376 unit property in Centerton, Arkansas. Um, this is, you know, Northwest Arkansas is kind of comprised of three different markets, and uh, it's kind of commonly dubbed Venderville, right? So, the the real initial draw of this market in Bentonville specifically is Walmart, right? This is the Walmart headquarters, and they have put a ton of money into this into this area. In fact, they require um, their executives to have a residence in the area. 
They've uh, the Walmart family has poured a ton of of capital into just infrastructure investment and just lifestyle investment. There's a big uh, you know dirt dirt boat uh, dirt bike um, tracks everywhere. Was considered some of the best in the country. Um, and then because of this kind of center of gravity of Walmart, they attract a lot of vendors to Walmart. And hey, we'll give you a preferential treatment if you're really close by here. We're going to be able to work out some good deals. And so there's some other very large names that you recognize, Procter & Gamble, Dr. Pepper, their Kellogg's, Hershey, and some of the other names uh, that you've probably have heard of are um, Tyson Foods. Uh, they just relocated their headquarters back to Northwest Arkansas. Uh, J.B. Hunt, very large um, company as well as is in this area. And so this is uh, driving a lot of population growth. And um, this this type of a product is really what we consider a class A nice community with a lot of amenities. Um, you can see some of the metrics here. So projected returns because this is class A, and um, you know this is more of a core core plus asset. Cash flow is not going to be as high, maybe on like a you know, value add or an opportunistic deal. Um, but we're driving a lot of back end growth uh, through. Um, these different amenities that we're going to be adding that I'll, I'll talk about in a minute, as well as just rent growth in this market. The organic growth in this market is, is pretty incredible. And so we're projecting um, an, an overall about 2 to 2.3x equity multiple over a five to seven year hold. Um, we have a preferred return in place, 6% preferred return. So you get paid that first. After that, 70 30 split until we had an 18% IRR, and then it goes 50 50. So a very, very simple structure. Uh, very preferential to invest uh, investors. So I told you we already acquired the first two phases. So how is it going, right? First first big question. Well, like I mentioned a minute ago, we're already 97% pre-leased, which means our physical, physical occupancy is 94%. And then that, that next 3% difference is, is the vacant units that have already been turned and already, already leased up. So we have very, very strong occupancy. This property um, is uh, highly desirable. It has uh, some really cool amenities I'll talk about in a minute. But we just uh, did upgrade the signage. You can see there, we, we made some really nice signage, um, kind of uh, consolidating the branding, really making a nice clean brand that is really appealing to uh, tenants as, as they come in and tour the property. Um, some of the little value add things we're doing, right? The value add for class A is very different than the value add for a class C or a class B property. What we're doing is we're adding additional amenities. We're adding an additional um, kind of benefits to the tenants that they will really like. And some of these are smart locks and thermostats. So we've actually put in the smart thermostats and the smart locks and all the units so far, including phase three, and the tenants absolutely love this, right? These are small, you know, small packages from a cost standpoint uh, for us, but add a huge amount of value and just attraction to um, to the tenant base. We've also there were no carports on this property, and for Class A, that's a, that's a, a must, right? So we, we've added 102 carports already within two weeks. We already have 17 carports leased at fifty dollars a month uh, per one. And so these additional uh, things that we can do like this to just drive a little bit of extra revenue on top of the rent growth, it just continues to, to drive uh, NOI growth. We launched a community engagement platform called Kobu, and this is a way for uh, tenants to engage each other and to kind of build a good community, do different events. I've, I've apparently really been loving that already, the feedback from property manager. Phase three, we're in progress, we're on schedule, um, and we're, our, our goal is to start actually pre-leasing these units before we even take possession of the property so that once we, we take over the property, um, we've already got a lot of tenants lined up. We can start cash flowing very, very quickly on that. Here's just some real simple, just compared to we've owned this asset for two months now. Um, you can see there on the EGI, so that's effective gross income. So that's what our top line revenue is. January, it's a little bit skewed there uh, because we we got credits for all the um, uh, all the revenue before when we closed, and then so you can see that relative to the underwriting. So we're very 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 close on the top line. It's been very very positive, very strong. Um, and then the expenses, this is a very, very positive thing where our actual expenses are significantly lower um, than our underwriting expenses. And this is just, we're very, very conservative um, in our underwriting of the expenses. Uh, and I'll get to that in a minute, um, both in the, the, the taxes, um, the insurance, and just some of the other turn costs and other things that we're expecting. So we're having very strong performance there. This is a fascinating chart. This is this is pretty crazy. So you look at in February of 2023, at the end of February, if you look on a trailing 12 month basis, so year over year, which markets had the highest rent growth? Right, because you've been hearing rents have been coming down, right? 
um, in, in different markets. And that's true in Phoenix and, you know, some, uh, you know, Southwest markets, you're starting to see rent growth going down, you know, potentially even rent declines. That's not the case in this market. Real estate is very local, right? And if you look here, number two on the list, Northwest Arkansas, the second highest rent growth market in the U S as of February, that's incredible. 14% year over year rent growth. We modeled in a three and a half percent rent growth number in year one. <laughs> I think we're going to, uh, safe to say we're probably going to beat that. Again, Northwest Arkansas, hottest market you haven't heard of yet. Well, I think that's going to be changed over the next couple of years. This is, uh, you know, I could pull literally a hundred slides worth of, of articles we started seeing on, on Northwest Arkansas. This was just in the Wall Street Journal the other day talking about this market. Walmart helped put Northwest Arkansas on the map and everybody wants a piece of it. This is a hot market and um, we're getting in on a, on a great asset in a, in a great area that's just a few minutes from the brand new Walmart headquarters. So phase one and two, you can see it was developed in 2018. We just purchased that a few months ago. Phase three, um, expected here to be complete in, in June. Uh, very strong occupancy. You can see just a beautiful property here. What do we love about this deal? I mean, it's, we're purchasing this off-market from the developers in the path of progress. We have very, very um, uh, strong employment, very diverse employment here, and very strong household income. You can see $230,000 average household income um, within a one-mile radius. This is a very, very great market, which allows us to have room on those rents, right? And um, there's not much more areas to be developed in this Centerton market. And so there's going to be supply constraints as there continues to be um, growth uh, from a population standpoint. It's going to be very, very positive rent growth in this, um, in this property. We have really great debt on this. Um, 3.49% from Fannie. And that's got nine years left on that. That creates a really nice spread on our NOI. And uh, we talk about this all the time, but real estate is one of the best hedges against inflation. So if you can ride the, the, the inflation uh, curve on the rent growth and then lock in your debt, um, that's going to be a very, very positive outcome for you. So our, really, our business plan here is very simple and we've already began executing a lot of this, like I've been saying. So really first is bringing the rents up to market. The developer did not optimize rents. So we're you know driving about two to $400 uh, in rent increases over 24 months uh, in renewals. And we've already started doing that and incrementally, incrementally increasing those rents up. And then you know, sometimes tenants don't love that, right? No one likes when the rent goes up. But what we're doing is we're adding these smart features. And hey, you know, we're, you know, rents are going up. That's kind of what the market's doing. But it, hey, we want to give you some uh, some benefits in addition to that. And, and uh, so we're doing that with these these smart smart locks, smart thermostats. Uh, the tenants have been absolutely loving them. You can see here some of the amenities. Just a beautiful clubhouse. We got new uh, new per pool furniture going in. Uh, there's a a uh, golf simulator right here in the clubhouse, a really nice gym. Um, so adding some nice decor there. Um, we're uh, you know adding covered parking, like we've already talked about. We're right now working with the city to get approval to add actual garages and self-storage units so we can additionally provide more value to the tenants, but also drive more revenue. Uh, we're also looking at adding tel uh, Tesla charging stations um, for EV vehicles and just continue to improve curb appeal. So it's a very simple business plan. But uh, it's it's pretty great when you can you know, you know drive this these type of returns from an asset that is this stabilized and this um, uh, uh, nice. So here's our budget here. I'm not going to review that in depth, but basically all the items I just talked about, plus some of the just basic capex and reserves. Here's some of the amenities, like I mentioned: golf simulator, basketball court. We have pickleball courts, swimming pools, pool tables, playgrounds. It's this is a great place. People love it. So just not going to spend a whole lot more time on the market. We talked about that a little bit, but you know, again, Walmart is the center of gravity in this market. And so um, Northwest Arkansas is kind of a amalgamation of three different uh, markets. It's uh, Fayetteville, Springdale, Bentonville, and those go uh, basically in a north to south uh, corridor on I-49. And Bentonville is at the top. And you can see you know, our property here is that just right outside of Bentonville. And it's literally five minutes from uh, the new Walmart headquarters. And we'll get to that in just a sec. Some major employers talked about that already. Some other stats that these are surprising things, but um, uh, 
It's one of the fastest growing cities in America. 2021 has one of the hottest job markets um, in uh, the country, a number one mountain bike destination, uh, one of the best places to live in the top 10, uh, ranked by US News World Report, and one of the eight best performing large cities. This is a market you want to be aware of. Here's just some of the other things that are going on here, some of the uh, retail, but also some of the um, uh, employers here. So it's really going to be a great area, both from a just convenient standpoint for, for shopping for tenants, but also convenience to uh, some of the bigger employers um, here. This is, again, Walmart. They are building what has been called an Apple-like headquarters. Um, you can actually go, there's a, a whole web page on web, uh, Walmart's website that you can Google um, Walmart new headquarters and you can see an interactive site. They're building this right now. It is going to be incredible. They are going to be consolidating a lot of their um, uh, corporate uh, employees all back here in Northwest Arkansas. It's going to be driving a lot of new job growth. Uh, the, the campus, they expect to accommodate between 18,000 and 19,000 people. So this is going to be a huge a huge driver of job growth in the market. And like I said, we're just five minutes to the west of this. Some more data, you know, a lot, a lot of great numbers here. The big one is obviously household income. When you're looking at class A, you want to be in really good areas. And that is what we are in. We're average household income of $230,000 uh, really makes it um, the numbers we're, we're projecting to be very, very affordable relative to income. You know, where are rents going? We talked about that a lot. We've seen uh, very strong rent growth just in, in 2021 and 2022. Like we saw the fastest, second fastest growing in the country. Here's some comparable properties of where they're, they're pricing the rent per square foot. Um, we're actually going to be below um, some of these, these other properties. And so we're not pushing this to the tippy, tippy top, but there's, there's a lot of uh, meat on the bone here to continue to, to push over the next couple of years. Here's some of the more rent comps. You can dive into those uh, later if you'd like. Um, <clears throat> here's, and just to be clear, so we are purchasing you know, phase three. We've already purchased phase one and two. We're not separating these as an investment for, um, for investors. So if you come in uh, to the deal with the last $2 million that we've got, you will be getting the benefit of all 376 units, all three phases. You're not going to be just in uh, phase three, right? So just want to be really clear about that. We've had some questions in the past. You know, how are you you bifurcating this? We're not. It's all one one asset. The the benefit for the investors that came in early is they're already starting to accrue their preferred return uh, right right when they funded the deal. And so for those that come in later, you obviously don't start accruing until you until you fund. Um, but it is the you get the benefit of the whole project here. So as the uses, so here's our debt. So we have our first first phase. You know, can't can't say. How important it is uh, enough here that we're assuming this this Fannie Mae loan has already been assumed, it's, it's completed, it's, it's done. Uh, for phase three, we're we're still locking down the financing. We've got several great options, both from local banks um, as well as alternative lenders, and we're actually right now exploring um, being able to finance uh, with a lease up program through Fannie. And so we would consolidate all of our senior debt with Fannie Mae. Um, you know, the, the rates are going to be a little bit higher on the phase three, but as a proportion of the total debt that we have, our weighted average debt is, is very, very low and it's going to be fixed. Um, and so it's going to be uh, a very strong uh, NOI. And we, we're pretty conservative in our debt assumptions on phase three. Here's our pro forma. <clears throat> I'm not going to spend a lot of time diving into that. You can look at the pro forma. We've linked to it at the end of this presentation if you'd like to, to dig into it. Um, but again, like I, sh I showed earlier, we're, we're way outperforming on our expense uh, side of things. And part of that is just we're very, very conservative in how we underwrote this. Um, and one of those uh, you know, big conservatisms was in the real estate taxes. Uh, we, were in the, we just assumed the worst case on everything. Um, it's very possible that um, it's much, much lower. Um, so there's kind of a big, big range here of uh, you know, how the real estate taxes get reassessed on this project. Um, it could, it, you know, might be this year, might be uh, next year when they actually reevaluate. Um, but it's, uh, we're using the worst case just to be, be safe. We have a stress test here. So you can look at exit cap. You know, class A generally trades in this market below a five, five cap. Um, but you can kind of see what the levered IRR looks like based on the I, uh, exit cap sensitivity. So obviously lower exit cap rate is better uh, for the project. Um, but you can see their returns still look great, even a little bit higher cap rates. Here's some other sales comps here you can look at. Um, we're buying this for about 194 a door. 
Um, we're starting to see uh, a lot of assets trade well over 200 right now. I mean, part of one of the challenges in this market is because it is so hot and it's it's got a lot of what I call old money from Walmart and a couple other big, big firms. Most of all the multifamily is owned by about five families in the market and they never sell. They just hold forever. And you know, one of the good things about that is obviously they're investing in the market. One of the challenges is it's there's just not a whole lot of transaction volume. So it's actually very difficult to acquire assets here because of um they have such a big, big hold on it. So to see that this one come come on uh, the market just a few minutes away uh, is, uh, you know, creates a very great sales comp. Here's a hypothetical investment um, and depreciation. We're expecting in 2023 to produce. We've already got a an, an initial analysis done. So it's not guaranteed, but based on a hundred thousand dollar investment, we're expecting about a fifty eight to seventy six thousand dollar write off uh, in year one. Um, so this has been assessed already. And again, you know, bonus uh, depreciation went down slightly in 2023, but it's still going to be very positive, about 80% still versus 100%. The timeline, this is uh, again uh, from the last deck. We've already funded the, the first um, uh, two phases. You can see we closed on January 5th. Uh, we're closing on three in June. So like I said, we've got a few spots left on uh, this, this third phase and about $2 million out of 28 million, 29 million total that we've raised. And uh, we'd love to have you join in. Um, already called the first capital. So we're kind of funding this lot, last piece for phase three here right now. And uh, so quarterly distributions are expected to start six months after. Um, and we send out uh, updates and K1s. We have some supplemental information. So uh, we are don't have time for Q&A today on this webinar here, but uh, what I would recommend if you have any questions, um, it doesn't matter what they are, we'd love to hear them. You can reach out directly to our team at investor relations at aspenfunds.us, or you can call our, uh, our number, go straight to our team, 800-940-1510, and ask those questions. And we'd love to chat with you about this project and get in uh, before... Uh, there's no more spots left. So thank you so much for joining this webinar. We really appreciate you joining. Hopefully uh, you are excited about it as we are. And again, if you have any questions, reach out to our team. Thanks so much.